we're going live very shortly with Andrew Mendez from Tipsy Social. Super excited. And we are going to talk about predictions for 2018 in social media marketing. Oh, knocking things over. Actually, make money. Um, you know, we're seeing 
we're inundated with Facebook ads. Everyone's talking about it. Everyone knows that, you know, Facebook is overwhelmed with advertising. Uh, ad costs are going up because they don't have the space or the time. Um, so you're going to start seeing things like we're bidding on ad time, you know, on Facebook. And how are they going to portray that? How are we going to see that? Um, as consumers, you know, you go on Facebook, you want to be social with businesses, you want to be social with friends, you want to see what's going on. Um, and I think the more they try to fit in ads and all of that, the, the less that people are going to want to interact with the platform, um, which we're kind of seeing now. Yeah, I mean, I definitely kind of got that feeling when they started to roll out the beta for um, having a different feed for businesses as opposed to not showing them on your personal page anymore. And, you know, organic is just non-existent. Facebook is totally pay to play. And so I really see some other businesses getting kind of frustrated with Facebook because like you said, it is completely inundated with ads. Um, so, you know, supply and demand, those ad costs are obviously going to go up continually. And even though Facebook has been that rock of a platform, you know, I definitely see it running into some issues down the line of, like you said, trying to supply a service to their customers, but then also needing to, to pull in that revenue from the businesses. So I totally agree on that. Um, so with that being said, do you, how do you feel about the saturation of ads on Facebook? And, you know, do you think that there's going to be a different way that businesses are going to have to approach how they play on Facebook um, instead of just creating an ad and posting it? So I, I do think that it's time to get creative. Um, you know, we specialize in small business. So it's time for those small businesses to stop just hitting that boost button on those posts and, you know, doing absolutely nothing with it but throwing money out there. It's really time to target who you're showing your ads to so that you're getting the best return on your investment. Um, you know, blanket, you know, guerrilla marketing and all of that on Facebook is not a thing anymore. You're going to be spending a lot more money and seeing a lot less results. Um, so I think that as businesses move into 2018, one of the biggest things that they want to look at is how is, you know, social media going to play within their overall marketing plan? Um, one of the biggest things I say is that Facebook, all social media is a tool as part of your marketing plan. Um, you know, yes, you can monetize off of social media, but generally you're using social media to monetize on something else. So how are you using that? What is the purpose of it? Um, and making your ads stand out as well as, you know, convert. Uh, and like we said, video, video is the way to go. People want to see it. People want to interact with you. They want to see the face behind brands. Uh, so video ads are definitely where I would push. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with you there. I think people are going to have to get a bit more creative and really focus on targeting. You know, a lot of times we have clients that say, well, I just, I want everybody to see my ad. I want to reach everyone. And the answer is, well, that's nice, but not feasible. You really need to focus in on who exactly you want to target and start speaking to them in the way that they want to be spoken to when, where, and how. So uh, really, really great point. Um, let's switch over to Instagram. So Instagram, obviously sister companies with Facebook. <laughs> hey, Instagram. Um, but hugely up and coming, um, be it because of the merger or not, you know, the Instagram is just absolutely skyrocketed in the last year. So do we think that there's going to be a bit of a competition with their, uh, their sister partner on Facebook? Yes, um, I do. Uh, I think that Instagram has become the easier platform to interact with as a, as a business, as a customer, as anything, you know, it really, allows you to not only tell people about your business to, you know, gain a following, but it also allows you to be a little more personable. Um, it allows you to, you know, do things like this, go live, but have a conversation while you're live with someone. Um, and, you know, when you're looking at ads on Instagram, it's not as annoying, I would say, as when you're looking at ads on Facebook, because you know, they're, they're very picture oriented. Instagram is about showing, you know, emotion and sh sharing imagery. So when you're building those ads, you're building for that purpose. So I think that as, 
you know, Instagram starts to get bigger and bigger, which we, we've seen it grow. I think that, you know, people are going to start seeing a better return on their investment, if not a better growth in their following, which in turn turns into, you know, growth on their investment. Yeah, I can definitely see maybe a, an overtake coming up soon. Um, you know, at, it's great that they merged um, because you do start to get those, the two algorithms, all the information in one, which, you know, I think is fantastic. The better they can map out where your target market is, you know, the, the easier it is for you to reach them. But I definitely, I see Instagram, you know, like you said, it's so much easier to connect with people, hashtags, tagging, and you can still get a bit of organic reach on Instagram, which like we were saying is non-existent on Facebook. So um, I totally agree that you can connect with people easier, you know, through hashtags and tagging, searching, commenting. I mean, as Rashad, one of our clients says that he hates Facebook and we talk about this a lot, but it is so limited on your business page, you know, to, to search people, to connect with people. It's really all about people coming to you on Facebook, whereas Instagram, you can actually go out and actively seek followers, friends, interactions, and things of that nature. So totally, totally agree with you on that. Um, now, do you see any big changes coming up in Instagram? Well, you know, one of the big predictions for 2018 is the increase in use of chatbots and trying to engage um, via, you know, things like Messenger, um, cause that's where people are participating. I never thought it would be a thing. You know, I never thought we'd lose text messaging since it's a feature that we all have. Um, but it seems that Gen Z loves to message, um, using Facebook messenger and DMing people. So, you know, I do think that Instagram just came out with a new platform. It's not very well known where they're trying to, you know, monetize that whole messaging experience. Um, but I do see that an increase in featureability of, you know, chatting, with people back and forth, maybe something that we see, as well as an expansion in uh, the way we advertise on Instagram. Um, you know, obviously people advertising on Facebook have the option to, you know, push it to Instagram, worst idea ever. Um, you know, so right now, if you're, you know, advertising from Instagram, you're really just boosting an Instagram post that you have natively um, to try and get a broader audience. Whereas I think we're going to start seeing individual features um, built into the app for businesses. Very, very interesting. All right. Now the big question, Twitter, is it dead or is it reemerging in 2018? So if you would have asked me this question a week ago, I would have said Instagram, I mean, Twitter is dead. I mean, it's as a marketer, you know, I studied Twitter uh, and I never agreed with anything I studied. Uh, so I would have, a week ago, I would have said, no, don't even bother. It's, it's worthless. However, last week, um, I was spending some time with uh, a group of Gen Z's and they were talking about how they were tweeting everything. Oh, this person just tweeted this. this. So I was like, what are you guys doing on Twitter? And they're like, <laughs> what do you mean? Like, Nobody's there anymore. <laughs> we only use Twitter. And I was like, well, what about things like Facebook? They're like, Facebook's for old people. Mm. So I was like, interesting. So I guess I'm old now. That's fun. <laughs> um, but that's really what they, you know, the Gen Z, which is the new target market for a lot of marketers, um, really is still tweeting away. Um, they're following, you know, Twitter, I feel like sort of died off in the marketing world because it, it was very hard to see a return on the efforts you were putting forth. You know, you had 140 characters to make an impact, um, to build a following. And when you're working in the marketing world, you know, 140 characters may not be enough to kind of build off of or to continue your strategy unless you're using it as like a support forum. People go on and complain about your product and you can talk back to them. Um, you know, Amazon has that. A lot of big brands have that. So I think that, it's not dead. I think that we just need to reinvent the way that we use it. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree with you. And, you know, same thing. If you would have asked me a month or so ago, I'm like, forget Twitter. Don't even put your time and effort into it. No way. 
Um, but you know, what you said about Gen Z, I think is a great point because they're, there's so much more focus on authenticity. So when you have that very limited amount of characters to get your point across, you're getting very straightforward information. Um, I think the real time kind of, um, aspect of it is very, very, uh, attractive to Gen Z. And I agree, you know, I think that Facebook is, you know, it's kind of, I always say to my new customers, Facebook's like Coca-Cola. It is a staple. It's massive. It's not going anywhere. It's probably not going to change and you're still going to buy it anyway. Um, so I do see the kind of point that they brought up with Facebook's for old people, because it does have a wider range. It was around for a lot longer. But I think what what's going to attract people back to Twitter, besides the um, obvious popularity it, it has amongst the political scene, <laughs> now it's getting a little boost from that. But um, I think people are really gonna start to crave that interaction again, as opposed to advertising just saying, this is my product, this is my product, this is my product, um, you know, kind of the sense that traditional marketing moved into digital, where it's just telling you what it is, it's going to start to infuse that conversation again, it's going to ignite the conversation of, you know, be it customer service with someone having a complaint about a product or um, someone just raving about a product because we all know how fantastic reviews are. So to retweet um, re good reviews or even just to see how people um, or to show people how you respond to a criticism or a problem customer service wise, I think that that's really going to start to attract people back to Twitter um, when they're looking for whatever product or service that they need. So uh, great Great points, and Twitter is not dead yet. You heard it no, here. It'll be very interesting to see. You know, they just came out since we touched a little bit on politics. Um, we won't get into <laughs> politics, but they just came out, and pretty much, you know, a, a huge issue that people were having with Twitter is that certain people are allowed to say whatever they want to say, but if a regular consumer said it, they would be, you know, banned from the platform. And Twitter came out and now is saying that certain people have special privileges. Um, on their platform. So it'll be interesting to see how that Gen Z, the authenticity, you know, generation interacts with Twitter now knowing that, you know, they give special privileges to certain people based on their status in society, which is another thing that Gen Zers hate. Um, so it'll, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see where Twitter goes from here and how it uses them. Yeah, definitely, definitely agree with that. Um, so I would also love to touch on YouTube uh, for a bit. So um, YouTube is, I feel like, kind of a silent player for people when they think of digital marketing. They don't really think of YouTube right away. But, you know, how many times do you go on and YouTube something a day, whether you want to listen to a song or you need to know how to fix a pipe underneath your drain because you don't want to call a plumber? Um so how do you see YouTube kind of tapping into that digital um, marketing and ads generation? So YouTube is definitely a player. They are a very silent player, but they're a player in the fact that most people don't think of it as a platform. Um, yes, obviously, you know, there's people who become successfully famous just by being on YouTube, you know, half of the influencers um, that people use in their marketing plans are YouTube stars. Um, so people are using it as a social platform, but in terms of businesses, one of the biggest things YouTube needs is it has to present a value to people. Um, you know, a lot of the successful videos are how-to videos. Um, not saying that only businesses that are gonna show you how to do something should have YouTube um, profiles, but as, you know, as video becomes more prominent and people want it, using YouTube as even just the funnel for your videos, like maybe you're using, putting your video on YouTube and then getting it on your website, um, you know, using that so that you can build a following on it um, and telling that story through YouTube is gonna be huge, providing that value. In terms of ads, um, <laughs> YouTube's been interesting with their advertising techniques. Uh, I think that they, they tried something. 
Um, it didn't work. <laughs> um, they lost a, a ton of customers that would have advertised on it. And I think there's still that fear of going back and advertising, you know, you, you, as a, as a business, you are presenting ad materials to these companies and paying for it. And you're kind of doing it in good faith and hoping that they're not just making crazy remarks, but then you see these ads on video that are not good for a brand. And it's like, it looks like you endorse that ad, but you have no control over it. So, you know, I think they're starting to figure out um, how to navigate that and it's getting better. But I do think that in the future, advertising uh, on YouTube is going to be bigger now that Facebook has is inundated. It's like, let's take our ads over here. Um, do I think it would be beneficial for small business? I don't know. That's still to be seen, you know. Even recording a video is expensive for a small business. So getting that ad recorded and put together um, and then getting it on YouTube and advertising on there may not see that ROI immediately that small businesses are always wanting to see. Um, so I think YouTube, summing it up, I think YouTube is still a player. I think that it is a value-oriented um, platform. You have to give a value to that consumer. Uh, in order for it to be beneficial. And in terms of ads, I do think it's a place to try your ads, um, see how you're doing on them, uh, but it's not a place to invest your full advertising strategy on um, as of current. Very, very interesting. Um, you know, I definitely think that people don't utilize YouTube enough as a form of having a, um, just like a channel on YouTube. I think especially now with the up and coming of video that um, if you're already filming these videos, you know, you want to get it out there as much as possible. So I think that setting up YouTube channels and like you said, using it as kind of a, an outlet to disperse your video is definitely something that we suggest um, because it can't hurt to have more of you out there. Um, but I definitely see what you're saying with the advertisement uh, I would like to see YouTube kind of tap into the targeting market that Facebook has, where you can choose specifically um, what kind of videos or the topic of video or, you know, a tag on a video that you would, your ad would then be put in front of. Um, I'd like to see them, you know, kind of target that a bit more. So this way you are getting the biggest bang for your buck when you're advertising on YouTube. Um, I thought that it was very interesting that um, for, you know, the first five seconds of your video playing are free. And then, you know, if someone continues on, then then you'll have to pay for it. Um, and I actually had a conversation with someone that I just so happened to be sitting next to on a plane. And I'm not going to say who it was, but they work for a certain larger company. And it seems that um, pretty soon Facebook, or not, I'm sorry, not Facebook, YouTube is going to be cutting that five seconds down to three seconds. So I would really, really like to see how people are now going to switch how they present their brand in order to try to get those three seconds in before people hit the skip button. So I think that's going to be a definitely, definitely an interesting switch um, and put more uh, emphasis on the creative that people come up with. Uh, to market their brands because now like Twitter going from 140 down to, you know, 90, you gotta, you gotta really get in there. So, um, do you think that if they did kind of reinvent their, um, their strategy on how they present videos and ads, you think that they can start stealing from, um, Facebook and Instagram and who knows, maybe soon Twitter. For sure. Um, you know, we, we say it over and over again, you know, video is where it's at. And the reason we say it is because it's true. Um, so if, if they could reinvent that and allow you to, you know, target who's going to be watching those videos, you know, having those bigger YouTube channels, actually, when they upload a video, say who they're targeting in that video. So as an advertiser, you can go on and say, okay, so this channel targets 18 to 24, blah, blah, blah. And being able to place your ads directly on there would be a huge benefit. Um, you know, it allows you to stop guerrilla advertising on their platform and really hone in on your market. So the dollars that you are spending, because let's face it, 
most people are going to see the ad for more than three seconds, but they're probably not seeing the ad. They're probably yeah. not realizing, oh, I have to click skip. Um, so, you know, you are going to be paying for that, but more likely that the product that you're showing or the creative that you're showing uh, appeals to that viewer, the more likely they're going to watch it through and click and follow through with it. Um, so I do think they could steal from those platforms because they're so video oriented. Facebook, you know, it's static, it's on there. You know, someone sees it, someone scrolls past it, you're charged for it. Someone thought they scrolled yeah. past it, charge you for it. So, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they never really explain to you what that uh, impression charge is, but uh, don't you worry, it's, it's just money you're throwing in the garbage. Um, so I do think that them targeting would steal. I mean, I would go to it as a marketer. I would brand on it. Totally, totally agree with that um, for sure. So we touched on it a bit, uh, the, the up and coming generation, Gen Z, um, but just in total, um, you know, authenticity is just a major necessity uh, when it comes to any type of marketing on digital, uh, specifically social media marketing, because it's supposed to be social. Um, we touched on it on a couple of our other Coffee Talk videos, but especially with Gen Z, uh, who craves that authenticity, who just is over the old traditional ways of marketing. Um, but the other generations as well can definitely see through any type of wool you're trying to pull over their eyes. Um, how do you think that the platforms um, are going to change in 2018 to kind of hone in and adapt to that craving for authenticity? So I think we've actually started to see some, you know, adaptation already um, in terms of it. Uh, you know, I went on our Facebook from my phone. I went on our Facebook page um, and noticed that we can now start Facebook stories for our pages. Um, you know, so. I think they're, a lot, they're starting to realize that, you know, businesses, it's not that they don't want to be authentic. They want to show our ability. They want to be grounded um, in reality, in society. They don't want to be those, you know, whatever um, big box brands, even though some of them are doing a great job at still being authentic. You know, if you see Taco Bell on Twitter, you're going to be in love because they're hysterical. Um, <laughs> So, <laughs> so there, there is that featureability, and I think that, you know, as we move forward into 2018, a lot of it is going to be um, building that authenticity, which will help with organic reach. Um, not, <laughs> you're not going to get a lot, but the more authentic you are, the more um, they, they pull in that, you know, the value component, um, the more shareable it is. Obviously, you know, you're building that liquid and link, uh, liquid and link strategy. Um, but more so, you know, we're going to see a lot more live video, um, in 2018, because you can show that behind the face of the brand, you can have that, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversation. Um, you can start storytelling, you can build a channel, um, not technically, but you can think about building a channel on your Facebook page, like where people are going to go to see more information. Um, and instead of just reading it, they're going to see it, um, so I think that, that we're moving in that direction. Now that we have groups on Facebook um, for our pages, you know, you can build a whole community around your brand um, where they can interact with each other, you can interact with them. Um, so I think that we're starting to see those changes now, um, but I think we're gonna need to see a lot more of them to keep it beneficial um, for the consumer and to keep them engaged, uh, you know, short term, you know, people are in and then they're out, you know, they want to see that immediate, you know, relationship. It's the same thing with social media. They either want to follow you or they don't. Um, and I think that that's where we're going to have to start playing in that little gray area of how to get them to want to and not want, not want to, you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, totally, totally agree. Um, I definitely think that, um, we have started to see that kind of alter of platforms, um, where there is a lot more live video, for instance, what we're doing right now, you know, having a one on one conversation over live video that people could tap into you, they can comment on, you know, they can kind of integrate themselves into it as well. So I think that we're going to see a lot more of that come into play. Um, I think we're going to see a lot more of the playfulness aspect uh, come in. So Snapchat with their, 
you know, AI filters and stuff like that. Facebook already kind of started to integrate it a little bit. Um, so, you know, I think that it's going to be very interesting to see how they start to give you the tools to more or less expose your personality via your brand. Um, I think that the Instagram where they have the story highlights now where you can, you know, put your two specific stories that you have to have them up over the course of time until you decide to take it down. So this way you can start to build how um, people are seeing your brand. So definitely, definitely some interesting things in the world of um, authenticity. So just to, to continue on that, the platforms are definitely going to make some changes um, in order to help facilitate brands to bring through that awesome authenticity and that personable humanization of their brands. But how do you think that businesses are going to alter the way that they market um, in order to kind of bring that brand out? Do you think that they're going to start to do uh, more faces behind the brand? Do you think that they're going to maybe highlight any type of charity work that they do? You know, what kind of things within a brand do you think that a business should kind of try to display on social media as opposed to just product, product, product? Yeah, so I mean, We've started to see, and it's actually become a lot of people's, you know, content strategy or portions of their content strategy that behind the scenes, um, you know, feel for the brand. You know, when you have that forward facing, you know, very professional, you know, all of your posts obviously have taken a lot of time and a lot of thought before they go out. Um, you kind of lose that authenticity and that connection with the brand. So showing those behind the scene things um, really get people excited uh, about what you do, who you are, um, and, and it's really cool. Um, I do think that, you know, we're going to see businesses.